Thank you, everyone. Thank you for your time. Uh, a lot of crowd has disappeared from the previous presentation. I uh, promise to keep it interesting. I have a partner with me to present and go through the presentation as well. Uh, I'm Arvind Srikumar. I lead the product management group at Cisco for hyperscalers and sonic verticals. Uh, first, before going through the presentation, I want to um, call out for collaboration from all of you. We would like to build Sonic together. We are here to listen to you. So through the presentation, we are going to present what Sonic means for Cisco's 8000 and Cisco itself. So if you have any feedback or questions, please do meet us after the presentation, and we'll, we'll be happy to answer that. So today we, are going to, today we are going to look at different aspects of Sonic on Cisco 8000. We're going to talk about the product first, what consumers or customers will realize with Sonic enabled on Silicon One based Cisco 8000 products. What's the unique value proposition a vendor like Cisco can provide while consuming Sonic on specific hardware that is catering to both Tor and Edge use cases. And we also are going to talk about different use cases that we have in completion along with the delivery model. Delivery model becomes particularly important in open source software because that introduces predictability, because that is very, very important when it comes to deployment, either it comes to enabling features or bug fixes. And at last, we are going to talk about open community, the contribution Cisco is making and continuing to make, and its commitment to furthering Sonic and open source NASA's like Sonic. With that being said, I want to jump straight into the product. But it makes a lot of sense while talking about product to talk about the design philosophy behind the product. When working with open source operating systems, the operating systems on hardware, and the operating system is not built by the vendor itself, we have to be very, very careful in balancing when we add code or add uh, value prop and the things that can be perceived as value prop by vendors, but not so much by the customers. So the design philosophy that we are adopting when we build Sonic or build any product enabled for Sonic with Sonic on Cisco 8000 is to leverage what you can and only build what you must. So internally at Cisco, the hardware can be conceptualized or we are conceptualizing, is conceptualizing the hardware consisting of three distinct layers. The two blue boxes represent the things and the product that is developed by Cisco and the gray box on top is community contribution. So we start off by talking about the hardware. The hardware itself is based on one silicon, that is Silicon One, and different products and product lines that are built out of Silicon One. So we cover both fixed and modular form factor products. The 8100 series is fixed form factor products, ranging from 32 by 100 gig to 32 by 400 gig. These are deployed across TAR or low buffer use cases. Now, if you want to compete in data center or complete a use case in any other um, segment in the market, we have to have high buffer, high scale systems as well. That's where 8800 product line comes into picture, which has high buffer as well as high scale, enabling us to complete a product in, in a particular use case as well. So now talking about the second layer, which is the infra software, infra software this is a very small glue layer which is essential for the operating system to realize the hardware. So this glue layer consists of components like SI to SDK plugins, the BSP, which is the board support package, which enables the operating system to control and contribute to the hardware underneath. This does not include any OS or SI itself. So the third layer that we're looking at is the Sonic operating system. That's pure open source operating system it also is built by the community. We take a reference point from the, from the community and we package it and provide it to the customers. Now, coming to the delivery model of the software itself, certain customers prefer software that is built by them. When I say talk about software, I'm talking about the operating system portion of it. For those customers, we provide the two blue boxes. And we provide the tools for them to build the software as well. For customers who need a more turnkey solution, we provide the infrastructure software and we package custom, sorry, community Sonic with it and provide a bootable. This gives them the ability to boot the complete system 
as they would with a vendor operating system. Now, looking at what we have shipping is a complete DC fabric use case. And we have enabled all the feature sets on that we are going to talk about in a, in, a, in a bit on Cisco 8100 product line. We are focused in FY23 to enable modular and spine use cases. That would complete the entire data center uh, use case with both low buffer and high buffer uh, and low scale and high scale deployments. So when I spoke about the software stack itself, I was talking about how we are not altering um, anything that we derive from the community. And this is where the balance strikes, right? So when it comes to platform SDK, we employ the support that is from Cisco. And for the other two layers, which is high API and Sonic OS, it's pure open source. It is not altered in any shape, form, or fashion. So it really enables the customers to realize all the goodness that is produced by open source and all the features that are available through open source. While we are supplementing it with unparalleled hardware when it comes to scale or features. With that being said, I'm going to hand it over to Deepthi to carry us through the rest of the presentation. Thanks, Arvin. Thank you, everyone. We promise to continue to make it worth your while. So understanding the value proposition. Um, OK. So Sonic is great, but how do you make it viable for what you're trying to do in production? More importantly, how do you make it deployable? So this is providing a view of use cases in general where you can leverage what is available today and how do you make it realizable on Cisco 8000. So data center fabric, data center interconnect, again, does not typically apply to a pure data center network. And we'll talk about this later during the presentation. If you are using a certain protocol component or components to build a specific five-stage clause architecture, whether it's based on IPBGP or an overlay like VXLAN, this is the amalgamation of product and technology that you can use to make it viable in production today. And that is what this particular stack is giving you a cross-sectional view on. As Arvind articulated earlier, in the slides, there are form factors available for both the 100 gig and 400 gig portfolio and the upcoming 800 gig portfolio across fixed and modular form factors. And this is where we typically see them deployed or being positioned within the networks across different use cases. So particularly highlighting here the 32 by 100 gig and the 64 by 100 gig, which are common choices for positioning within your lead spine architectures. Again, could be a CDN network, could be an IP fabric in a data center or an enterprise or a telco cloud. Same goes for lean edge use cases. The same set of features are portable because of the one SDK advantage that you get across the fixed and the modular form factors. So that is something that is being leveraged with Sonic to be able to take it to the next level. OK, now when you are trying to deploy something in production, it's not piecemealing one particular factor and looking at it unidimensionally. It's a multidimensional process where you are looking at different factors to be able to see what recipe will make it viable in production. So you're not just thinking about hardware. You're not just thinking about software. You are thinking about maintenance. You're thinking about support. You're thinking about training. You're thinking about documentation. Because those are the different components that make an OS, software, or even a product, hardware, real in production deployments. And that is what we are trying to do. Our key focus area is to preserve the open nature of Sonic, to take what's already good and blessed by the community, and harden it on Cisco products or platforms to make it realizable for different use cases. It's not trying to alter it in any way, shape, or form. It is preserving that openness, which is a key focus, and trying to drive it end to end, also from a hardware positioning procurement standpoint, all the way down to the maintenance standpoint. And we'll talk a little bit more about the release cadence on what that really means from a vendor for open source NAS. All right, so let's talk about one step deeper, use cases. Again, Sonic is flexibility, Sonic is freedom. 
how do you go about taking it step by step to see where it fits before you get into the day zero, day one, and day two operations? There is a decision that comes before that. Does Sonic fit the problem I'm trying to solve? And this is trying to answer that question to a certain extent. There is a certain set of protocol features that is available in the NOS today. Everyone is visible, and that information is visible to everyone here because, again, this is community sonic. It's trying to preserve the open source nature of the NOS per se. We are looking at an amalgamation of features, whether you're trying to deploy a top of rack, a spine, super spine, or a cloud edge top of rack. We are looking at layer two features, layer three, protocol components, IP, BGP routing, IPv4, IPv6, ACLs. The definition of the scope of what BGP supports, again, is within the purview of open source. So there is no hocus pocus to kind of figure out what's there and what's not there. Any architecture that is leveraging these protocol components, that is leveraging these, these features, can be realized with Sonic. And what this is trying to do is showing you a picture of whether it is an IP fabric using BGP or it is an overlay fabric using VXLAN, whether it sits in a telco cloud to the earlier illusion or within a data center or an enterprise. If you are using this set of protocol features, if the hardware form factor fits the speeds and feeds requirements that you're looking for, the power consumption needs that are attractive for what you're trying to solve, then in that sense, this is it. And what we are trying to do, and this is um, just a preview for a lot of information that is available off band, and we'd be happy to answer more questions as they come along, on how do I go about and take it to the next step. If I want to take Sonic and play it on a Cisco 8000 sandbox, you can do that. If you want to understand how do I configure and operate a basic five-stage clause architecture with BGP, or whether will it fit my CDN use case, I just need one top of rack, a router on switch to solve a couple of simple problems. There is a recipe or a cookbook to help you understand that better. And all that documentation is something that we are trying to contribute, again, preserving the open source nature of the NOS and making it viable for production. That's great. Now, how do you consume it? So this is a demarcation of, and not a guidance, this is a demarcation of what the typical consumption models happen to be. So there is customized Sonic, meaning I know what I want. I take the open source NOS, and I build my own feature sets on it, which is, quote unquote, a build your own approach to using Sonic. There is a vendor customized Sonic. Hey, I don't want to deal with it. You deal with it, do what you need to do, and give me the features that I need, which is not open community Sonic. And then there is community Sonic or the open source NOS flavor that you see everyone does. And that is what I want. I am not trying to solve a complicated architecture problem with an open source NOS. I have a simple problem. I have a lean architecture. I need the flexibility. I need the agility. I need to know what's happening in code. And I just want to make sure that it works on the hardware that I buy from you. And that is what we are trying to do. So Cisco validated Sonic is taking that open Sonic, baking it, and making sure that the quality and the hardening aspect exists on the Cisco 8000 platforms. It has been tested and hardened for the use cases that we've talked about, so that you are one step closer to making it viable for the deployment that you're trying to make happen. So a release cadence, what does that mean? And that is exactly what I said in the previous slide. It's hardening community Sonic on Cisco 8000. We are not trying to disrupt that openness in any way, shape, or form. What we are trying to foster is quality. What we are trying to foster is assurance, giving the operator peace of mind that they are not on their own. And there is a validated release model to be able to back that up. Again, the focus is for this to not be a project that I'm just doing for fun. It's real. It's something that we are trying to make happen for production deployments. So with that 
view in mind. What are we talking from a major release and a minor release model? A major release that follows a sonic train that tries to go about supporting that same sonic code branch that you see available on the open source community and making sure that it's validated on Cisco 8000. And some of these numbers depict a very recent trains that are out there in the community right now. The minor releases per se are trying to facilitate and foster production type issues. I have a small fix here and there. I don't want to wait for the next quarter or the next six months. These are production problems. These are real problems. And here is a model backed up to be able to assure operators peace of mind that yes, we are with you in this approach and there is partnership to be able to collaborate into making this happen. And this is just a preview on what is it that we are doing within the community. Uh, again, we are very happy to be collaborating with other operators and vendors alike on making a NOS realizable for wider consumption. Uh, these are some of the initiatives or areas that we have recently participated and engaged in. And thank you very much for your support. Uh, again, this is like Arvind alluded to at the very beginning. We are looking to collaborate. This is also a call out for partnership and ideas from operators and consumers alike on what is it that you would like to see better on areas of growth and improvement. And we would be able to help you help us better. And that's about it. Hopefully, it was worth your while. I see nobody napping, so it was a success. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you.